Back Home Media. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 58 of Kansas Missing and Unsolved Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Chabergi, and joining me again, Derek, down in Arizona, Kelsey over in the western part of the state. How are you doing, Kelsey? And Derek? Good. <laughs> Good. I'm finally back again after yeah. weeks I haven't joined you guys. Right. And people have been wanting you back. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard I've been missed, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Don't forget to yell out where y'all are watching from, folks. Just let us know so we kind of keep tabs on it. Got a lot of people here so far. There's Hayes. Sorry for, sorry for the late start. Tamara Becker. And Belinda, how you doing? Here in Salina. Newton. Norway, Kansas. I'm not sure where that's at. Never heard of Norway. Mead, Kansas, Southeast Oklahoma, Salina, Wichita, Wichita, Illinois, Fort Scott, Newton. Love it. Yeah, me too. All over the place tonight. Junction City. You know, I heard the most terrible story today about Junction City. Uh Uh-oh. No, the article I sent you, Ricky. Oh, yeah, that, 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 yeah. At work today, I ended up with this. I ended up on the phone with this woman who just left Junction City, and a year ago, last May, she was having a get together at her house. Her son was like nineteen, and his friends were around the same age. Yeah. And she went to bed around like midnight, and then around two in the morning, two guys stormed Whoa. the place and killed her kid and killed his best friend. Oh, and they wow. caught him and everything, but I, I she was telling me the story, and I just got on the news, and like it was a huge thing in in, uh, in uh, Junction City. So that was really Utah. That's our first Utah that I know of. Yeah, and I lived in Junction City for probably a couple years, and I'll tell you, right. like, I mean, honestly, it's not the best place to live. I don't. I've never been there. It's right off the highway, the military base. There's a lot of different people coming through. It's just, it's mm-hmm. kind of scary. Even my brother said when you were living in Junction City, because I lived, you know, right by Fort Riley when my first husband was in the military. It's not the nicest place, unfortunately. So Yeah, it was, apparently it was over his uh, stimulus check. They thought he had his stimulus oh, check. Oh, my goodness. Oh my which he didn't even have on him. It's crazy. That's not the first time I've heard a story like that either, Derek. Yeah, there's a lot of people that died over a stimulus check. Oh, mm-hmm. It's not even that much money. I mean, depending I on what you're getting, but like, just get a job, people. And by the way, we're not we're not crapping on Junction City. We're just talking right. about this horrible story that I heard today that happened to yeah. be in Junction City. Oh, but, we got uh, one from California. California, yeah. Oh, wow. Lucy Ramos. Hey, thank you for joining us from California. Andrea says, "Yeah, it sucks here." <laughs> you know, hey, there's we we cover enough cases to know that every every town in the country has uh, has its rough underbelly. Exactly. I'm sure exactly. there's some beautiful things about Junction City too. Well, that's a that's a lot of people watching from all over the place. Yeah. I like that. That's awesome. Right. I like that. Got a good reach tonight. It's yeah, bigger. <laughs> I like how it gets bigger and bigger and more people tuning in from all it. over the place. I love it. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twi- Twitter, which is Periscope. So yeah, if you're seeing us on any of those platforms, you know, share us, mm-hmm. subscribe to us, tweet us. I wonder if Shady Booty's going to be here. I'm hoping Shady Booty shows up. <laughs> Lots of crime. Hi from Cortland, Kansas. Hello from Newton. Hello. Sabetha. I never heard of that. Wichita. Nice. Nice. Well, um, Ricky has a, a really good update. Um, and I'll be honest, I did not think we were going to get this news this week. Um, right. Based on how long we've been covering this case mm-hmm. and based on how little activity there has been from this individual I really yeah. thought we were going to get bad news on this one. Right. I mean, you get, I've been doing this a year with Ricky. You get used to like the ones sometimes just like, man, I hope this is going to be okay, but it's been so long. But uh, Ricky, tell him that uh, Adriana Pack is no longer missing. Right. I got that photo sent to me today from her mom. It is a, it, it, 
right there in the picture with her, letting me know that Adriana had been seeing herself on our show and she'd been seeing herself on Annette Lawless is Missing in Kansas segments and on the internet and stuff. And she reached out to her mom, said, hey, mom, come get me. So she went and picked her up and brought her home. So Adriana Pack is back home safe. And it just goes to show you that us, everybody talking about this, not even just us on the screen, but people that are viewing this show, people that share this show, people that share the flyers, it works. I mean, mm -hmm. we essentially all together with the news, Kansas missing and unsolved, people sharing the flyers. Eventually, we got through to this girl's head and she she made the call to be like, hey, I'm OK. And honestly, yeah. I'm telling you, like, I really didn't think we were going to get good news on this one. We haven't heard Nobody's heard anything from her. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's awesome, yeah. man. And I really wish both of them the best. And I just I hope from this day forward, they both have a really good relationship and good life together and a good reunion. And, you know, my prayers go out to both of them. That was just awesome, awesome news to get today. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that's I, I, I think I said, what the hell? When you wrote you sent me that yeah. picture, I was like, yeah. -uh. I was like, no way. That's exactly what I said, too. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> He's just going to show up, huh? All right. right. Well, that's, that's really that's good. It's really yeah. amazing. You know, makes you know that you're doing good things, Ricky. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Back home where she needs to be. Yeah. And I love that we can start the show out with something positive like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of starting the show out, um, it says I have people bring flyers about different cages to the hotel. I manage my staff, and I always keep an eye out. Awesome. That's good. Thank you, Michelle. And honestly, um. The, the hotels are a great place to look, you right. know, a lot of people passing through town, you know, a lot of, yeah. and think about right. it. If you're, if you're somebody who's on, on the, on the loose out there on your own, a will, you know, you have to sleep somewhere, you know, cause a lot of people that are missing could be in a hotel, you know, it's like, yeah. there's, you know, and today's also national missing children's day as well. And oh, wow. I made a post on that earlier today and, you know, just keep sharing and, and, printing and posting these kids as flyers out there you know all flyers for that matter but kids as flyers and let's help get them brought back home you know yeah. what we what we do does work yes this is working mm -hmm. and um we are going to cover we don't have a huge show tonight as far we usually have a lot more cases but um we still have quite a few people that are needing to get home um, you're watching the Kansas Missing and Unsolved podcast. We'll be right back after these words covering some cases. If you or someone you know is a victim of human trafficking, call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 1-888-373-7888. And this is one out of Nebraska. Amber, or Ambria, excuse me, Hogue. Missing out of Omaha since April 5th of 2021. She is 16 years old. She is 5'6 to 5'7 inches tall, weighs between 110 and 125 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. It's believed she may still be in the local Omaha area or she may be in the Fremont, Lincoln, or Bellevue, Nebraska areas. If you have any information regarding Ambria's disappearance, you know her whereabouts, please call the Douglas County, Nebraska Sheriff's Office at 402-444-5804 or 402-444-6641 or the Nebraska Missing Persons Clearinghouse at 877-441-5678 or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-843-5678. And see if we can't get her back home. It's coming up on almost two months for Embraer. So let's let's get her found and back home. For sure. Most definitely. April 5th. Yep. You're very welcome, Charlene. We do our best. <laughs> we really do. I like to think that I do most of the work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You do the kidding. production that goes in, and you do the production work that goes into the show. And that's a lot. <laughs> well, Ricky, Ricky was sick yesterday, and he still had to make flyers. Yeah, how I was you little, doing, by the way, cowboy? You feeling any better? Yeah, a little bit, not a hundred percent, but I'm getting there. I don't know if it's just overheated or what happened. Probably, man. It's starting to get warm out there, man. Yeah, and inside that building was very, very. I mean, even though the air conditioner was on, I was still getting very, very hot. Yeah. And you are very welcome. But, uh, Tell us about Andrew. 
Which one? Andrew. Andrew Llewellyn. That was one that I ran into on KBI's website yesterday and felt like he needed to be covered. He's missing from Wilson County, Kansas. Since May 12th of 2011, he was 42 when he went missing. He would now be 52, and I apologize for my phone. <laughs> Six foot tall, he weighs 165 pounds. He has blonde or strawberry hair and blue eyes. Um, he was last seen in Wilson County, Kansas on May 12th, 2011. He's never been heard from again. Few details are available in his case. Again, he was 42 when he went missing. He's now 52. He's six foot tall, weighs 165 pounds, has blonde or strawberry hair and blue eyes. And if you have any information regarding Andrew's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Wilson County, Kansas Sheriff's Department at 620-378-3622 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And let's see if we can get him found and hopefully found safe. I mean, it's been 10 years, but anything's possible. So let's hope for the best. Wow. I literally was just looking at the May 12th part, and I was like, oh, he's been gone a couple weeks. <laughs> yep, he's been gone for 10 years. Jeez. Hello from Lubbock, Texas. Appreciate all the work you guys do getting these kids home safely. Well, hello, Robin, down in Lubbock, Texas. Thank you for joining us tonight. My niece is in Lubbock for, like, the summer. Lubbock's big. I never knew Lubbock was big till my brother moved there. And they're like, it's bigger than Amarillo. I'm like, what? Hmm. I thought Lubbock was like a small town. Everything's bigger in Texas, Derek. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Uh, um, let's talk about Brianne Lee Miller. Now, we've covered her recently, right? Who's that? Yeah, um, I was contacted by her mom again, and her mom asked me if I heard anything new, and I said no, and she asked me if I could reshare her flyer, and I said, sure, no problem. So, yeah, I do want to get her out there again. Um, Brianne Miller, missing from St. Louis, Missouri, went missing on July 26, 2020. She was 21 when she went missing. She's now 22. She's five foot four inches tall, weighs 135 pounds. She has brown hair and hazel eyes. Um, her tongue and ears are also pierced. She went missing. Um, was, excuse me, was last seen in South St. Louis on Delore Street. She has a tribal heart tattoo on her right bicep that says "Love." A tattoo of the name Rob on the right side of her neck. A tattoo of a heart on the left side of her chest, and a tattoo of two hearts on her upper right left or her upper left thigh. Excuse me. She was last known to be wearing a pink short sleeve top and white jeans. If you have any information regarding Brianne's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the St. Louis, Missouri Metro Police Department at 314-231-1212. Or you can call the Crime Stoppers hotline anonymously at 866-371-8477. And let's see if we can't get her found. It's coming up on a year here in just a couple of months. So really want to get her found. Hopefully she's still out there safe somewhere. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, definitely. You're very welcome, Nicole. Thank you. It's never good when, when any of these cases hit a year mark. Yeah. But it's always good that, you know, we hear Adriana's case today. You know, like there's, that's one where it shows that like it's it's okay to have hope. You yeah. Know? Yep. Sometimes it gets, it's, it's easy to get hopeless when you're dealing with people you can't find, you know. But yeah, I think the Adriana Pack thing today was a real shot in the arm of like, hey, <laughs> get in the game. You know, this is they're, mm -hmm. they're out there. There's people there. These days, this is working, you know. Right. Now, we've covered Deidre before, too, haven't we? Yeah, but she's recently gone missing again. OK, well, let's talk about Deidre. So, all right. She went missing from Topeka, Kansas this time. She went missing on May 19th. So just a few days ago. She's 17, she's 5'4 to 5'5, 140 to 150 pounds, black hair and brown eyes. I believe she still might be in Topeka or she may be in the Lawrence area. And if you have any information regarding Deidre's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Topeka, Kansas Police Department at 785-368-9200 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can help get her located again. I definitely need to get her found back to where she needs to be. Yeah. And there again, you know, Deidre, you're 17, you're almost 18, you know, get back to where you need to be and, and do this the right way, you know. 
and there's there's a process and you know you need to get with it and follow the process that's true yeah and Dennis Rubel, awesome work, guys. Thank you, Dennis. And honestly, when you're younger, um, for me anyway, mm-hmm. to me, like any kind of control seemed um, foreign. <clears throat> and also, it seemed um, like, I don't know, just seemed, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why there were things like processes and why there were things like, mm-hmm. you know, you know how to how you know like proper protocol to do things you know it's like well we we all just wake up on a spinning rock can't we do whatever we want it's like not really yeah. you know it's like there are processes and, and the older you get DJ, the more you'll realize that although it does seem like we have a bunch of rules as humans um it's really to protect us and it's really right. to help us get further down the road um as far as just you know accountability and all that stuff so yeah. Uh, yeah, like Ricky's saying, you're almost done with the whole childhood process. You're about to be an adult. So go back, do it right, and then choose to have a great future. You right. know, do, put your best foot forward and do things right. And you, you're in control of your life. You, you have you have the option to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And Dennis Rubel, he's he just started a uh, search and rescue. Uh, uh, organization that he's working on and he's working on oh, some really? searches in so yeah, he's doing some searches in some areas on some cases and I was talking to him the other day and I'd like to get him on a future show as a guest to talk Spend about what he's doing and where he's doing it at. Link him up. And we'll do that. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, we love working. Yeah. Thank you, Trisha. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any information uh, that would be Ryan Larson. Last I I was just checking that earlier, just right before the show. They're draining a lake, Papillion Lake. They're draining that lake um, to try to search for them. Apparently, they've had search dogs up there, and they've hit different places on like three different days. But they're not sure whether they're human hits or not. So they're they're kind of checking that area out to see if they can find anything. And like I said, they're draining the lake right now, too, trying to get it drained to look some more. Mm. Yeah. And Carrie says, thank you, Dennis. And Dennis says, sounds awesome, guys. Thank you. You're welcome, Dennis. We'll get that set up. Our next show is going to be June 3rd, so maybe we can get you on that show. Let's shoot for June 3rd, if that's okay with Dennis, if you're free that night. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and I changed my calendar to May. I don't know if you can there see it goes. behind me, but see it. It's, it says oh, finally right now that we're almost over with May. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> yeah. I just like April so much. I wanted to keep it around longer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about Hope. Okay. And we've covered her before, too. Um, but I wanted to cover her again, mainly because the picture, second from the left with the blonde with the green in it, that was her most recent hair color. And then I managed to get a hold of that picture. But she's missing from Olathe, Kansas, since May 11th of 2021. She's 15. She's five foot four, 215 pounds, blonde hair with uh, light green in it, you know, like a reference again, that second to the left-hand picture there. Um, she does not have her prescribed medication, and she was last known to be wearing a gray hoodie, gray or black sweatpants. She may also be carrying a light gray backpack. Um, if you have any information regarding Hope's disappearance or you know her whereabouts, please call the Olathe, Kansas Police Department at 913-971-6363 or 913-782-0720 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't help get Hope found and back home where she needs to be. Yeah. And she's been gone exactly two weeks today, so see if we can't get her located. And Hope, if you see this, like Adriana saw this, yeah. uh, anybody that's over the age of 18 that's letting you stay with them right now, actively breaking the law and they know it so 
that's yeah. the type of character that you're with right now. Somebody who knows that they're actively breaking a law that they will get into serious trouble for, and they're okay with it. So just to let you gauge the temperature of the room that you're in, if you're staying with somebody over 18 that is just cool with you being there and not telling anybody where you are. Yeah. Um, so that take 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 that for what you will. Yeah. But, yep. And here's a comment for Kelsey. Kelsey, you're oh, thank pretty. You. Thank you. <laughs> oh, she's smiling. I can see her on the, on, in the behind the scenes. Yeah. I would concur with that. <laughs> I would too. We have we have the prettiest co-host here at KMU. Yep. <laughs> now she's really going. Now she's she's blood. No, I think she's blushing now. <laughs> Ricky, you haven't called me pretty in a year. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to the females to decide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. Let's talk about Casey Steiner. Okay. She's actually a new one that I did today. Missing from Topeka, Kansas since May 22nd of 2021. She's 18. She's 5'5 five, five to 5'6. Five, weighs between 185 to 220 pounds. She has brown, brown hair that has been dyed jet black and brown eyes. Um, if you have any information regarding Casey's disappearance, we know her whereabouts. Please call the KB or excuse me, Topeka, Kansas Police Department at 785-368-9200 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't get her back to where she needs to be also. It's been gone just like three days, but that's three days too long. Yeah. You know, I don't understand is there we go. Thank you. Thank there you, you go, Derek. You feel better. <laughs> Aliens are taking these people. Oh, okay. Well, you never know, man. You never know. Um, no, uh my and my wife turns it off all the time. We have this thing where like like I can know I know exactly where my wife is right now. Um, like she's at her brother's house and, and unless she left her phone at her brother's house and then now she's out living with another man or something, but like her <laughs> phone is at her brother's house, Ricky. Okay. But like, right. I, I, I don't, and I think maybe parents try to do that, but like, I just don't see how, I don't know, like they should make it to where that's not an option. Like you shouldn't be able to say, yes, I'm traceable or not. Like if you have a phone, if you're going to have the responsibility of having a phone with you, and this is probably like some treading on people's. Gra- I just, I just feel like we we have too many people that we can't find that are probably holding a smartphone. You know what I mean? Like there should be yeah. a way to to over govern that and like, and like you know track people down. But yeah, the Life three hundred and sixty app. That's what we use. And the reason I got it is because my wife's really bad about not answering the phone, and she'll be gone for like eight hours sometimes for work and. I have no idea where she is. She doesn't answer her phone for like five hours. And she works, she's a case manager for uh, adults with uh, disabilities. So she's very busy. Um, But if I can't find her for four or five hours, I freak out. And I'm like, I have no idea. If she was in an accident, I have no idea where to start looking. There's no way. You can't just call the police and be like, is my wife okay? They're like, we have no idea, sir. This is a humongous city. So that Life 360 app, like I know at least where her phone is all the time. So like, it just makes me feel a little better. And then also like if anything were to happen, like I actually know what's going on, you know? So right. I just, uh, if, if you're out there and you have kids and stuff, uh, download that live 360 app and tell your kids like, Hey, you can turn the, uh, you can turn the locator off whenever you're 18. But from now, if you're, as long as you're under 18, you have to keep that locator on. I need to know where you people are, you know? Yeah. My ex actually had that on my daughter's phones, and I don't think it was Live 360. I think it was a different one, but it was supposed to be one of those things where uh, the kid could not uninstall it from their phone. It right. was supposed to be, but my 14-year-old daughter figured out how to uninstall it from her phone. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. She did figure out a loophole to uninstall it, so she I mean, took it off her phone. She took it off her sister's phone. I just want to try I know, I know the, 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 I don't know. It's just my daughter's 32. Yeah. The EV, yeah, we don't pay for it. It's the free version we have. Yeah. Honestly, like, and anybody that want, doesn't want to be on it, in my opinion, is doing shady things. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> like, my dad's like, I don't want to be on that. I'm like, what are you doing, dad? He's like, nothing. I just don't want you guys to know where I am. I'm like, what are you doing, dad? 
But he's like, you know, I don't want anybody to know where I am. I don't want the government knowing where I am. He's, you know, he's 60. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, I so I'm, I don't know. I, I think if, if, if you're cool, with it, I, I, I think that those applications where you can see where the phone is, at least, I think that's really helpful. Keeping people yeah. just saying, knowing where, you're, knowing where your loved ones are. Right. Now, this name, is you sure this is uh, uh, Nathaniel? I've never. Yeah, that was the name, Nathaniel. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've heard Nathaniel a lot, but never Nathaniel. Yeah, Nathaniel Solis Jr. He's missing from Topeka, Kansas, and it's May 23rd of 2021, so a couple of days. He's 17. He's 5'8", five 5'9", foot five foot weighs between 160 and 180 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. He left home on foot, and it's unknown if he is still on foot or if he got a ride from somebody. Uh, he was last known to be wearing a black Adidas hoodie, blue jeans, and, a, and red Nike shoes. If you have any information regarding Nathaniel's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Topeka, Kansas Police Department at 785-368-9200 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And let's see if we can help get him back home to where he needs to be. Yeah. There again, 17, almost 18, you know, just need to... You know, but like we talked about earlier, though, like a lot, even even if you turn 18, you know, it's it, depending on certain situations, like, you know, you still have to be accounted for. Right. And going back to the, the Life 360, her son pauses his location on his Life 6, 360, the only thing I hate about it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. That wouldn't be good. My wife turns it off and I'm like, honey. What's the point of having it? She's like, it drains my battery and I haven't left. It was during COVID. She'll turn it off because she doesn't leave the house for like a month, you know? But then that one day she has to go, she forgets to turn it on. Hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. I'm a little suspect of the whole situation. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. We've got a couple more left, everybody. Um, let's talk about Peyton Cloud. All right, Peyton Cloud. That's a new one I just did today, too. Missing from Wichita, Kansas, since April 26th of 2021, so almost a month. She was 15 when she went missing. She's now 16. She's 5'3 to 5'4, weighs 150 pounds. She has red hair, but it may be dyed black, and she has brown eyes. Um, if you have any information regarding Peyton's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9456 or 316-263-6011 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can help get Peyton found since she's been missing for a month. Yeah. She had a birthday. Yeah, she did. She had a, it was in April. Uh, not long after she went missing, so yes. Hopefully, we can get her found back to where she needs to be. I mean, she's 15, 16, that's you know, it's too young to be out there running the streets, especially yeah. especially a place like Wichita. Not knocking Wichita, but I mean, I mean, any big city, you don't want yeah. your you don't want to be 16 out in a big city by yourself, you know, and yeah. not knowing who to trust and everything, yeah, right. Definitely. Yeah. That is really sad, yeah. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Tell us about Richard. That's one that I ran into on KBI today, too, that I felt like I needed to do one for. And as soon as I locate his... What? Oh, there it is, way over there. Okay. He's missing from Overland Park, Kansas. Uh, went missing June 22nd of 2017. Um, he was 38 when he went missing. He's 42 now. Six foot four. He weighs 240 pounds. He has red or auburn hair and blue eyes. Um, he, like I said, he went missing from Overland Park, and he's never been heard from again. A few details are available in his case. If you have any information regarding Richard's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Overland Park, Kansas Police Department at 913 895 Six three zero zero or the KBI at seven eight five two nine six four zero one seven, and see if we can't get him located because it's coming up on four years next month. Wow! So he's been missing for a little while. That's sad. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely. Hopefully he's okay wherever he's at. He's just decided to take a break for a while or something. Right. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Looks like we have about three more left to cover by my count. <clears throat> okay. We have uh, Tanaja. Yeah, we've covered her before. And Brain RP, because I've added some new photos to her flyer, the one on the very far right hand side. And I don't know if Derek can get them on screen, but there's a couple at the bottom. Um, she's missing from Kansas City, Kansas. Been missing since March 15th of 2021. Um, she's 17 years old. She's five foot two to five foot four. She weighs between 100 to 145 pounds, black hair and brown eyes. It's believed she may still be in the local Kansas City, Kansas area, or she may be in Topeka. If you have any information regarding Tanasia's disappearance or you know her whereabouts, please call the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department at 913-596-3000 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't get her back to where she needs to be. You know, here's another 17-year-old that, you know, she just needs to needs to go back and handle things the right way. And, you know, it's not going to be too long before she's 18 and, you know, be out there as an adult and you can do what you want, you know. But for now, let's just, you know, get you back to where you need to be and take care of business and, you know, do things the right way. And keep hoping by, you know, adding these new photos that, you know, that'll help get her located. You know, like the different facial expressions and things like that. Right. Make it easier to spot her. I agree, Carrie. I agree. Yep, so sad. It definitely is. <clears throat> got a couple more cases for you guys, and then we do got a locator safe reel um, to end the show. It looks like it's going to be a short show for the first time in months. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a little bit longer, but a couple that I had made last night were found today. So Right. That we have a lot a good of things, which is a good thing. Yeah. It's always good when they're found. We got one more case that we were normally going to cover, mm -hmm. and then uh, tonight here's, Kelsey's going to go in. Uh, yeah, here's this is Adriana Pack's mom right here. Oh, awesome! You are very welcome, Marie. I'm glad That's she's awesome. home with you. I hope she's doing yeah. well. That is awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, we got one more case we're going to cover, mm -hmm. and then we're going to cover an unsolved homicide. Kelsey's going to tell us a little bit about what's been going on in that. There's some new developments as far as. Um, what's going on with um, the family and some some news and stuff? So, Ricky, tell us about Tom, Tony right now, and then uh, we're going to talk with Kelsey about Dana R. Huffer. Okay. This is actually a silver alert out of Independence, Missouri. And where is her? Oh, there it is. And she's been missing since May 8th of 2021. She's 71 years old. She's five foot two, weighs 117 pounds. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah, blue eyes. She walked away from an adult group care facility located in the 1800 block of South Sterling Avenue in Independence, Missouri, in an unknown direction at about 2.30 in the morning. She was then seen at about 4.38 in the morning on May 8th walking westbound on 24 Highway at Northern Boulevard on the south sidewalk. She was later seen continuing westbound on U.S. 24 Highway at Ash Street at 453 in the morning. Uh, she was believed to be last seen on May 8th, around 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the 2300 block of East 12th Street in Kansas City, Missouri, asking for tarps and blankets. It appeared she was wearing a light blue or gray zipper hooded sweatshirt, light blue jeans, and a mask. If you have any information regarding Tony's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call 911 immediately or the Independence Missouri Police Department at 816-836-3600 and see if we can't help get her found and back to a safe place. Hopefully she's still okay wherever she's at over there in Independence or Kansas City. Yep, yep. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> Phone yeah. again. Yeah. It's a part of the show at this point. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. <clears throat> well, Kelsey. Let's see, let's huh? see what Nietzsche is saying over here. Interesting case. In case you missed it, Supreme Court denies Columbia man's request for death by firing squad. Justin has faced the death penalty since killing three people at a Columbia convenience store in 94. Johnson's execution was halted in 2015 when a U.S. Supreme Court ruling asked the lower court to review his case. Huh, interesting. Well, I can check that out. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Dana, Ricky, and then Kelsey's going to talk a little bit about what's been going on. Okay. Actually, I was going to go ahead. And Kelsey, you want to go ahead and read this one? I forgot. Yeah, we'll let her cover that one. Okay, um, I guess I kind of was trying to think of how to start with this one. And when I first started doing Facebook pages, Dana was one of the ones that I just really felt kind of connected with. And you guys know I have Dana and Catherine Adam and then Tabitha Brewer. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those are pretty much unsolved homicides. I mean, Catherine still is considered endangered missing, but we can kind of figure, you know, the amount of blood that she most likely was murdered. Um, but Dana, um, you know, once I moved out to Kansas, I wanted to start focusing more on, you know, cold cases. And I'm doing, been doing a little bit of work on my page, Kansas cold cases. And I spoke with Dana's mother quite a bit. And basically, you know, the story with Dana is, you know, she was found murdered um, and it's coming up on 22 years now. June 18th will be 22 years that, you know, we haven't, had any answers in her case there's been you know some controversy like people have said things but we've never got a solid answer you know and i have several reasons for why i think that is you know um but recently with dana um like i said i speak with her mother quite a bit and um she's not in the best of health right now and she's been given about you know four to six weeks to live so me thinking, you know, being Memorial Day, like we need to bring up her case again, you know, maybe that'll spark something in somebody and they'll, you know, speak up. You know, Dana has was a great person. You know, she was unfortunately, you know, a victim of addiction and had problems with addiction, but she loved her family and was very loved. You know, and this one, like I said, always touches home for me because I speak with her mother, you know, quite often and you know, hearing the news about how Renee's health is doing just, you know, struck a nerve with me. And I thought, you know, hey, maybe we can bring up her flyer again. And, and also it's coming up on her 22 year, year that it hasn't been solved. So, um, you know, and the family is offering a $2,000 reward for anything that leads to the conviction of, you know, who's responsible for her death. So... You know, just just a really this is one of the cases that really I don't know, I really got into and dove deep into, like I said, spoke to her family, watched the interviews. So, you know, it's always one that I'm just partial to. So and I think we have our certain cases that just really stick out with us. And I was really hoping, you know, by making the video, you know, again, a lot of the cases that I deal with are cold cases that don't have a lot of social media or any media at all. And they're kind of pushed to the side due to, you know, whether they're being in trouble or whatever the case may be. And, you know, I was really just hoping that we could, you know, get some answers for her. So. Mm -hmm. Were you wanting to cover some background on the case or, you know, do you have your information there handy or you want me to cover? Oh, that yeah, the there? flyer as yeah. far as. Okay, I'm sorry. Did I kind of? <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Um. So, do you want me to just read the flyer? Or yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Okay. So basically, on on June 18th, 1999, Dana was 25 years old, and she was found, you know, really badly beaten, um, and she was almost unrecognizable. Um, she was killed in Wichita. Um. So she was 25 years old when she was killed in Wichita at home in Great Bend. She has, you know, two children now. Um, I'm not sure on the exact ages, but at the time they were eight years old and a seven month old baby boy. Um, you know, Renee stepped in to raise the grandchildren. Every year they used to take trips to Wichita to, you know, make sure Dana wasn't forgotten. They'd hang flyers, you know, and walk around the neighborhood. 
And, you know, the last few years, you know, they hadn't really been able to make the trip and, and now more so because, you know, Dana's mother is not in, in great health, you know. So June 18th, again, is the anniversary of, you know, when Dana was found. We're coming up on 22 years and, um, you know, the daughters had just said before previously in interviews, you know, just knowing who she hung around with and, you know, hoping someone would come forward so we can have that closure, you know, and mm -hmm. as far as I know, the case is still open, but again, this is one of the ones, like I said, that just, you know, it's been so long that there hasn't been any media or anything. And that's my whole purpose is to kind of create the Facebook page and, you know, get it shared, you know, just like you do with the missing, the other missing people, Ricky, you know, we share it, the more we share it, the more it gets out there. Right. You know, so I mean, Dana did have a lot of troubles in her life, you know, but she really was a great person. And if you watch the video that I made on the Kansas cold cases, YouTube, you could tell how much she was loved. And, mm -hmm. you know, they just want some answers for her. You know, right. it just really breaks my heart, you know, what's going on with her mother right now. And I just that's why I asked her tonight, I was like, is it okay if I speak on this, you know, on the show? Because, you know, I just, I've done a lot of work into making her video and trying to share her flyers and just trying to get some answers for the family. Because I know, you know, not only her mother, but then, you know, her three children and, you know, and her sister really loved her too. And so, and like I said, there's a short video if you watch like Kansas cold cases about, you know, Dana and it goes into more detail and talking about her family and stuff and just what a good person she really was. And unfortunately, you know, she fell into the life of addiction. And I think that's why, you know, nobody ever really spoke up or maybe the police didn't take it seriously, you know, things like that. So, right. Yeah, and sadly, when it's an individual that does have those kinds of demons in their closet, sometimes law enforcement doesn't exactly take it seriously. Right. Well, and not only that, I think the people that she hung around with, too, didn't really, you know, like we always say, Derek, you know, people don't really want to wrap people out either because right. you know, fear of, a fear of retaliation or just fear of the police in general because they're doing something that they shouldn't be. You know, and they don't really want to talk to police because they're afraid they're going to get in trouble. You know, but again, like we always say you guys can remain anonymous. Nobody has to know that it's you. you right. know, these are these are mothers and 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 daughters and and granddaughters and sisters and you know they have family. They want to know what happened to them. You know, have yeah. closure. Have somebody, you know, held accountable for you know what happened to them. That person's still running around on the streets. They could could or have done it to somebody else too you know mm -hmm. they need to be held accountable for that and right this like i said just talking with dana's mother and and just you know she was really such a sweet girl and that's why she ended up with the prompts that she did is because she went along with everybody and she wanted to fit in right so she wanted to be accepted and you know and she just hung around the wrong people and they took advantage of her so mm -hmm. it's just you know like I said, making her video and, and sharing her flyer and having her page for her. I was just really hoping, you know, after all these years, someone would be clean and come forward and just, you know, speak up to give her mom and, and her children that closure. Because I know, you know, I, I see things that her mom posts every day and she just really just wants to know what happens to her, you know, so she can, you know, eventually rest in peace. And Right. So... Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and if anybody does have any information regarding Dana's murder, please call the detec Detective C Rick Craig at the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-268-4181 or the KBI at 1-800-572-7463. And there's also a $2,000 reward being offered uh, for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons responsible for Dana's death. So that's out there as well. And, and if you're not comfortable reaching out to, you know, law enforcement agencies or whatever, I, you know, I encourage people, you know, reach out to me through her page or be anonymous, you know, I'll right. or that information on as well, you know, because I really, I want answers for her family. Right. So. It'd be nice to get those answers for her family, especially with, you know, the information that you're just sharing about Dana's mom and. Yeah. Um, you know, there's also another reason why people don't snitch. And I think it's um, 
it's 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 because uh there's no so say okay let's just use dana as an example so somebody killed dana right we're all we're all in agreement to that some somebody on this planet killed dana right um so now say that person went on to do something good like have a family or do something you know i'm just saying like sometimes i've i've known situations where people didn't tell on somebody because they were like I want justice to happen for them, but I don't want to ruin their family's life. I don't want to ruin that person's kid's life. Their dad's going to go to jail. You know, people are afraid of setting off that chain of events that completely stops. Cause you know, Dana, Dana got murdered that day, but whoever took her life, they, they started a journey that day with Dana that they're going to take to their grave if they never get caught. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's something they're taking with them forever. So, um, I, I I see sometimes like people just don't want to start trouble. Like if I tell on this person, there's going to be su- such an onslaught of things that are going to happen. Like people are going to, uh, somebody might lose a spouse, somebody might lose a dad, somebody might, you know. So I feel like that it's just such a messy, complicated situation uh, right. where you start being like, yeah, what they did was terrible. But if I say something, then it's going to end their life. And not only their life, it's going to end everybody that cares about them. So, I mean, it's the thing is, is like at the end of the day, anytime like a homicide or anything takes place like it's not just one person dying right. um, everybody involved dies somehow everybody involved right. dies somehow even if they even if they never get caught whoever did this unless they're like a sociopath is probably thought about it every day for the rest of their life you know right. it's like so <laughs> It's just one of those things like I, if you're out there and you're watching this and you have any of the reasons that we've all tried to come up with on the year of doing this show of why somebody wouldn't say something when they know something. Um, I'm not mad at you. I get it. It doesn't make sense in your head to say anything, but just look at look, look at her. She had nothing to do with the equation and she's gone. Mm-hmm. That's that's the only person that matters in this equation. All the rest of it is just details. Right. Right. Dana is the one who is, you know, matters. Yeah. I like Roxanne's comment there. It says, if anyone watching and are listed is missing, call someone as soon as possible. There's so many things that can go wrong with the way things are anymore. If you know anything, please call Crime Stoppers. No one will know who you are. So important. And I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yep, Nisi, I brought that up earlier in the show. Today is National Missing Children's Day. That is very true. Yep. So share those flyers, share the show. You know, let's get them brought home. I have a feeling. I have a feeling we need to show this guy's face. Ricky, you want to do one more? Oh yeah, thank you. It's another one that I'm working on too. Yeah, let me grab his flyer real quick. I forgot. Take your time, man. The longer we have his picture on the screen, the longer I make some dirt bag uncomfortable. That's fine. Yeah, I'm definitely making people nervous with that because there's been people that have been speaking out and saying things. So yeah, this is going to get interesting. Yeah, Yeah. Alexander Perez. He's missing from Ulysses, Kansas, since December 1st of 2020. He's 35. He's 5'11", 235. Black hair, shaves it bald, brown eyes. Uh, he got a hold of a family member on the phone on December 1st and said he'd be coming over to do some laundry. He never arrived at the family member's house, and he's not been heard from or seen by family or friends since then. And he had been staying with family and friends prior to his disappearance. It's believed that he may still be in the local Ulysses area, or he may still be in the Garden City or surrounding areas. Um, again, he's 35, five foot 11, weighs 235 pounds, black hair that he shaves off and brown eyes. He has a bumblebee of a, or a tattoo of a bumblebee under, on his face underneath his left eye. Also has Perez tattooed on one of his arms. And he also has that tattoo going across his, co- his uh, collarbone there. If you have any information regarding Alexander's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Grant County, Kansas Sheriff's Office at 620 356 Three five zero zero, or the Ulysses, Kansas Police Department, six two zero three five six four six zero zero, or KBI at seven eight five two nine six four zero one seven, and see if we can't get him found and back home. This is another one where I've actually spoken to his family as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen his mom on the last couple of shows. Usually she comments and lets us know she's here, but I haven't seen her the last couple of shows. 
Yeah, I haven't either, but I have seen, you know, her post a little bit on Facebook because I am friends with her. So right. I just be taking a break from it. I mean, we're talking about December here. Yeah, I know. I mean, six months of nothing. Well, not nothing. A lot of, a lot of stuff, actually, you know, on like social media and stuff. But yeah, six months. All right. But with him, you know, that's the thing that his mom actually did tell me is, you know, he would maybe you know, be gone for a week or two at a time. Right. But to be gone this long with no contact because he does have a son, you know, he would eventually show up. So that's why right. you know, since December, yeah. we're going on what, almost six months now. Almost, you know? yeah. yeah. You know, it's just very, very unusual for him. Yeah, it is. You know, but you never know. You never know. I still have hope that, you know, maybe one day he'll show up and you know? Yeah. Let's hope so. Well, this is uh, the best part of the show. We're going to show you our located safe reel, and then we'll do a little bit more uh, when we get back. And uh, you're watching KMU Podcast. Yeah, and I want to kind of expound on Nikki was saying, remember, there's no official wedding period to report a person missing. And that's true. There's not. I mean, every now and again, I'll run into a family member that says, oh, you know, my, my missing loved one's an adult. And they told me I have to wait 72 hours. No, there's no waiting period at all. You can have that report filed immediately. Well, actually, the way that a statute in Kansas is written is that when any law enforcement agency in Kansas receives a report, of a missing person they have to take and file a report immediately have it entered into ncic and on kbi's website within two hours of filing that report and i've talked about this before the differences between the adults and the juveniles is with adults when they're located if they don't want their location known by law please don't have to reveal that location all they have to say is we've found them we've talked to them they're fine they just don't want their whereabouts known at this point you know with juveniles yeah they have to you know bring them home bring them back to where they need to be you know stuff like that but i've had some people in the past tell me that oh because they're an adult they can go missing if they want to and and they, they're they not going to file a report well by kansas statute they have to i mean like i said the only difference is they don't have to tell you where they are if that person doesn't want their whereabouts to be known but they at least have to still do the report and file it. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not talking down on law enforcement or talk, talking bad on law enforcement. I have the utmost respect for law enforcement and I always will. But just want to let you know that there is no waiting period to file a missing person's report. I want that to be known. But anyway. <laughs> And I do like the located safe really always does, you know, does my heart good to see those located safes and to make those located safes. It's always, it's good. Makes me feel good. And here's another one from Nisi outdoor enthusiast solve cases. That's very true. Um, matter of fact, that skull that was found here in, in Salina National almost a month ago now, I think it was actually found by mushroom hunters. So yeah, that is very true. Really? Yeah, it was actually found by mushroom hunters. Still no word on that one, right? Still nothing yet on that one. I'm still waiting. And we still haven't heard about the one in, in Mitchell County either, have we? I haven't heard anything on that one either. I'm assuming the forensics on that skull probably takes a while. Yeah. And I don't know exactly what, what they meant by top part of the, uh, the update on the news article I read was supposed to be the top part of the skull. And I don't know if they mean it was just the actual top or from here up, the right. lower, lower part of the jaw. don't know which that meant, but hopefully they can extract DNA from it to try to, to identify it. Do they have Catherine DNA? I don't know. I don't know if they would think any. they would have some from the crime scene. You, know, you, you, would think, think, you would think it would have been her van. You would think they would have took samples of it and, and put it on ice somewhere, you would thought. And seeing v, and v, Vista Lida said, good to know, I always thought you had to wait. And Belinda Vance said, I always thought you had to wait. No, you do not. 
No. Yeah. And Alicia Perret. Here's the case out of Wichita that's been unsolved for quite a while. I'll look into that. I will look into that. Send that one to me, too. I will. I will do that because I would like to see that in regards to. I'm curious. That is very loud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sound like you were like scratching a record. <laughs> Ricky, stop my, touching your mic. <laughs> I was turning the phone on it. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Sorry. <laughs> well, Alicia, can you kind of give us a heads up on who that case is about before we look into it? Yeah. Because I'm going to have to go into the comments and copy and paste that into Google and see who that brings up. Tim McGinnis? McGinnis? McGigan? McKeegan? McKeegan? McKeegan. I'll have to look and see on that one. N C G U I G A N. I'll have to look that one up and see. I'm keeping a constant window up on Google for Ryan Larson up there in Nebraska to see if any new developments come up. And so far, nothing. Just that they're draining that lake and. Hopefully they will find him because it sounds like he had been planning this little uh, deal that's going on here because he'd done searches for uh, how to avoid being seen by police, how to live underground, how to avoid being spotted. Wow. So he might be fine just hiding somewhere. Yeah. But the fact that it's over a week makes it a little scary. Yeah. Okay. Tim McKeegan up. I've actually done a flyer for Tim McKeegan in the past. I will have to see if I can locate it on my jump drive if I made sure I transferred it to that jump drive and cover that on, on the next show. And we'll have to look at that. She says, Kyler, yes, trying for a new trial is BS. Women are not safe if he is ever freed. Yeah, I hope he didn't get a new trial. He just needs to just face the facts that he's guilty and deal with it. Because he knows what he did. He can deny it only once. But he knows what he did. So, I saw during his trial he was actually trying to pin it on his brother that I believe committed suicide or something like that. He tried to pin it on him saying, oh, he did, he did, I didn't, he did. Yeah. So hopefully that conviction will stand. As it needs to. Well, I want to thank everybody tonight for joining us and hanging out with us and going over these cases with us. And you know, it's been a good show. You know, and a lot. You know, again, I can't say enough about the good news I got today regarding uh, Adriana Pack. That was really good to get that. You know, it just it really makes me feel good. Yeah. And she's back home, safe, with south with her mom, and she's safe. Yeah, that's good to know. But yeah. thank everybody again for joining us, and and they, yeah, Nisi's saying he tried to blame it on his brother, but the brother committed suicide while he was incarcerated. Yeah, and Marie is saying thank you so much, Marie. You're very welcome. You know, and and let Adriana know that you know we're glad she's home and safe, and we're, you know we'll keep her in our prayers and keep you in our prayers and. Hope you guys are doing well and continue to do well. And Brooke Dennison's talking about Alex Head still hasn't been found. Last seen January 15, 2019, Enterprise, Kansas, 510-135, Lonish Brown. I do have a flyer up for him on the page. We'll be sure to get him on the next show as well. Yes, you are correct. They, I believe they found his truck abandoned someplace, if I'm not mistaken. So, yes, we will look into Alex's case on the next show as well. Making my little notes here. And then we get our next I can show. at least get his picture up for a second. Well, we'll cover the case next week, but I can at least get his picture yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. There he is right there, Alex Michael Head. Yep. Yeah. That's a long time ago. 
Yeah, been missing since 2019, January 15th. So that's been over two years. So two and a half, almost two and a half years, honestly. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll get him covered in detail next show, which is like again since June 3rd. So everybody be ready for that one. Yeah. But until then, again, thank you everybody for joining us and hanging with us tonight and covering cases with us. And hope to see you all on June third show. Until then, you guys have a good night. Stay safe. God bless, and we will see you then. Well, I don't think it. I thought it. That's different. I said what I said, and I meant it or lamented. Words given weight without thought, and a person the way that I talk and the way that I ought to be able to pause and to say that the fault can be placed on my arms and this playful assault to disgrace in this arm. Pray for the day they could wait for the calm. You can't control the storm, only weather it. Weather it's five weeks and five days of rain sideways. A scorched earth, search for death or water left with all the thorns. With the petals gone, settle on the breath of autumn. If the crown fits, wear it. The crown fits. If the crown fits.